Hello friends, hope everyone is doing good. This is Ruby Singh with the Real Estate News School. Hope all is well. As you know, we've been uh, talking on different subjects, uh, selling your house or if you're planning to uh, invest into a property or if you're planning to buy a new house. So in this, we covered actually yesterday morning about the uh, first time home buying process, right? So let's also talk today, you know, so many people, they ask me, Mr. Ruby, what do you think is, is the best choice, you know? Is renting is the best choice or owning a house is the best choice, you know, taking such a big mortgage on 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 your credit, on yourself, you know, uh, what would be the best choice for us, even if we are just uh, newlywed or just starting a new life, right? So I know that that's a big question out there about owning or they should own it or they should rent it. Because uh, owning your own home might be, you know, one of the defining qualities of, you know, American dream, right? The set of ideals that include opportunities for prosperity and success and an upward social mobility, you know, for the family and for children that achieved through, you know, of course, <laughs> uh, with all that comes in, right? Like owning a house and you feel that, yes, you are in that prosperity and success or upward social mobility um, norm, right? So home ownership, guys, is surely ingrained as one of the strongest representation of that vision, right? Because I know, I think around... I was reading the other day because uh, around 66% of Americans, they own their home, own home, and more hope, you know, that other people also who are not owning, they wish that they did own the house, their own house, you know. So something about home ownership, it plugs a strong cord with Americans, you know, financial security, um, permanency, status, pride, you know, these are the values many of, you know, Americans, they seek, right? So lifestyle plays a big role in the decision to own versus rent, right? This home buying is most often is driven by uh, household formations, right? Such as like, you know, when people get married or if they have, now they are having a children, the family is growing, right? So less than 40% of people under 35 year old, they own homes. 60% of people um, over 35-year-old own homes. And more than 80% of people who are 60 plus, right, 60-year-old plus, um, they also own their houses. So, interestingly, for the millennial generation, the primary reason for uh, buying a home you know, because <laughs> they love dogs, right? And when they are renting, they can sometimes they cannot bring their dog. So <laughs> that's the millennial, you know, generation. Because the the U.S. home ownership rate has fluctuated between sixty two percent, seventy percent, you know, uh, since nineteen fifties. So most young people begin their independent lives renting an apartment or maximizing lifestyle flexibility 
and minimizing the heavily upfront cost associated with the purchasing a home. Okay. So as they build careers, they save money and start families. Many choose to buy a home, right? Recognizing that home ownership as opposed to rental living, right? Because that's most appropriate to their growing family needs, including their dogs, correct? So at the other end of the age spectrum, you know, um, home ownership nearing retirement, who may desire to sell their house or they downsize since kids are grown up, they don't need um, a big house, you know, with so many rooms or such a big square footage or, you know, they avoid, and also they are, they avoid the maintenance and other obligations, you know, so they are not interested in owning and they just want a simple, happy living, right? At that point, they are not interested in maintaining the house, taking care of the house, all the wear and tear. So, which is the best? Is it best to rent or buy a home? That's the question, correct? Uh, because most adults, they ask themselves, this is, you know, at some point as they form their goals and plans for the years ahead. So before you answer the question, you know, there's something to you have to ask yourself right owning and renting each have their advantages or disadvantages but what's the best for you depend on your circumstances correct you have to see what are your circumstances circumstances and and what are you know needs that best fit your needs have to figure it out what will be the duration of your stay in that home because each market is different guys you know but whether the home time you plan to spend in the house it warrants its purchase is possible to predict because in general terms it takes four to seven years to break even on a home you know where there has been uh, enough appreciation um, to pay back the cost of the transaction and cost of the ownership. So if you're thinking about buying a home and selling it, you know, in two years, buying is very unlikely to be cheaper than renting because you are planning to sell it soon, right? So you have to think the need of your house, um, either if it's a, as an investment or you are planning to stay there and or this is your retirement plan, right? Because Americans are used to their homes being stored for wealth to liquidate in retirement when downsizing their lifestyle, right? So, because, you know, I know that most Americans, they named real estate, then stocks or savings or account CD or bonds or as a best um, long-term investment. You know, real estate leads with the 31% of Americans, they choose it, followed by stocks, mutual funds, you know, at 25% uh, cautionary note, though, you know, although home price have recovered since, you know, 2006 market, you know, we all remember that market, right? That slumps and continue to rise and value of your home that can fall as well as rise, correct? We know that, right? There's a, nobody has a prediction of that. So, you have to decide are you financially ready owning a home is you know because 
it's a financial commitment, guys, you know, that requires planning how home ownership fit into where your life is headed, right? You have to ask yourself what your budget is and if either buying or renting would require you to stretch your finances, crunch all the numbers, a frequent mistakes of, you know, um, sometime first time homeowner, home buyer is comparing a month to month rent to month to month mortgage payment, correct? So many people don't have all the numbers. There are many uh, additional fees necessary to include to make a fair comparison, principal, interest, property, taxes, property insurance, homeowners uh, association, which is called HOA fees, right? These are all ongoing maintenances, correct? So you you have to decide that are you prepared for for the down payment? Is this is a lump sum payment that funds your equity in the property, how much of the property you actually own is down payment very 20% is preferred and get the best result. So there are some loans that will allow, you know, down payment as long as 3% or three and a half percent sometimes you know or sometimes relatives they help with the down payment so if you have a choice take a gift rather than a loan because lender will add a loan debt on your monthly obligations and potential mortgage payments to determine your debt to income ratio which generally um, can top 43 percent to qualify you know for a home loan okay so you have to decide can you afford the monthly mortgage payment and its components you know so because generally a mortgage include loan principal and interest both amortized over the you know life of the loan um, you know side by side the the principal and the interest plus you have to consider homeowners insurance uh, property taxes right um, that you have to pay either every six month or yearly right so that all adds up towards your monthly mortgage payment so these items can affect monthly loan you know only payment by several hundred dollars right because if you're paying through your mortgage payment it will be added to your mortgage payment the, the taxes the insurance you know if you decide that you're gonna pay it every month instead of waiting for every six months or or a yearly right so what they do they calculate the total taxes for the year uh, and total insurance for the year and they bring it to the to your monthly mortgage payment you know so you have to decide that can you afford the monthly mortgage and its components right generally more you know it includes the principal interest you know homeowners uh, owners insurance and taxes and which is called Usually, it's abbreviated as P-I-T-I, P as in principal, I as in interest, T as in taxes, I as in insurance. So P-I-T-I, -I, that's most mortgage lender, they, they abbreviate as P-I-T-I -I for your monthly payment, okay? Another... Uh, Thing you have to consider guys that are you emotionally ready can you can you handle the stress because a big factor to consider when buying a home is a stress you know the homes and raw a stress scale a landmark stress study ranks many events that go along with buying a home in the top 43 you know most 
stressful circumstances in life. Okay, four events are specifically home-related change in financial state, large mortgage or, or, a, or a loan that can change in living condition, change in residence. If someone has recently made other life changes such as, you know, they got married or they are switching the career or they are having a child, it might be wise, you know, to, to reconsider what, you know, mortgage payment will be, what kind of changes you need to have before you jump into, you know, getting your mortgage. So overall, you can lead to sometime, uh, you know, these circumstances can lead to mispayment, which can result in, you know, it can destroy your credit or even, you know, foreclosure or losing a home. So it's a better sometime to rent if your life is uh, flux or if then buying a, or getting, you know, into such a stress level, uh, higher stress level of paying off the mortgage. So you have to be ready, guys, for that commitment. You have to consider, are you ready to make a lot of decisions from picking a real estate, uh, you know, starting talking to someone who is expert in real estate field to picking the paint colors, correct? So you have to be confident enough to choose a neighborhood, you know, where you believe home's value will continue to appreciate and that will serve your needs approximately to schools, shopping, recreation. Uh, you have to consider, are you ready for devoting the time and attention to maintain a house, you know, leak, uh, you know, leaf raking or uh, grass cutting or appliance maintenance or the house repairs or taking care of, you know, biggest investment, investment can be gratified, but only if you are ready. Okay, so advantages of buying your home you know you have to think what are, will you know if that's an advantage for you okay and some of the advantages you know let me explain that to you guys you know what are the advantages of buying a home right you have to control over your housing expense you know, by selecting fixed rate, either 15 year mortgage, or if you're taking a 20 years mortgage, or if you're taking a 25 years mortgage, or typical, you know, which is very common uh, out there is a 30 years mortgage, okay? So the homeowners has assurance that housing cost won't increase over the period and in fact will be eliminated to the end of the term, you know, subject to refinancing. You, uh, another advantage you have to think is uh, uh, you're building an equity. What is equity, Ms. Rivi? Um, equity is, guys, as sum of each monthly <laughs> mortgage payment, it goes towards the loan's interest, right? Remember we talked about that earlier principle of the loan, how much the loan is, you have to, of course, pay an interest on that, correct? So that, you know, each monthly mortgage payment that goes towards the loan's interest. Other portion may go to, um, of course, homeowner insurance and taxes that we also covered that, P-I-T-I, -I, remember? Principle, you have to pay every month when you're taking the loan, P-I-T-I, -I, which is principal, interest of the loan, taxes of the loan, and insurance of the loan, okay? So other portion may go to, you know, uh, as we say, you know, homeowner insurance and taxes. So the remainder pay down the loan principal every 
dollar you put towards your loan principal, it represent a dollar of equity. Okay, because it's you are paying down the principal, you are paying down the loan, right? So the actual ownership of the property further you know property should appreciate in value each year correct right real estate appreciate right so further adding to equity what the house could be sold for versus what is owned on it discounting you know certain blip periods such as you know we remember that 2006 horrible, horrible uh, housing bubble burst in in U.S. You know when the home prices in U.S. that that appreciate nationally at the average annual rate uh, between three percent to five percent, it was very, very you know so much money was people were sitting on the money, but then. Then the reality hit in 2008 and 9 when market went down, and that the time was a worst time of people's life, right? Because they lost their homes, they lost, uh, you know, so much of the money. So, but in 2000, you know, when the it, the housing bubble burst, home prices, you know, appreciate and nationally, and it appreciate between three to five percent. So, you have to remember, guys, though home value appreciation in different uh, metro areas, it can appreciate at you know markedly different rates than the national average. Okay, it cannot be same nationally. It's not all the same. Okay, it's all different. It happened uh, market appreciate or depreciate at different rates at national average. Okay, another point I have to bring is that you know when you make a uh, in in advantage of uh, improvement. Okay. Because improvement that increase your home's value, a homeowner can also increase home's value through home improvement, both making your home more comfortable and enjoyable while growing to uh, LTV. L, uh, okay, LTV is abbreviation. It's called loan to value ratio. That's called LTV, and that's uh, what most mortgage lender or appraisers they use that term LTV loan to value. Okay, for instance, you know if you're adding a bathroom or finishing a basement, you know your kitchen bathroom substantially, that can increase the property's um, functionality and appeal while potentially boosting its value, okay? So, another good advantage is, is uh, uh, when you buying a house is tax advantage of home ownership. So, there are significant tax benefits associated with buying a house, both at the time of the purchase and for the duration of time you own the home, right? Like homestead exemptions, many, you know, they state exemption of owner occupied homes, you know, from a portion of the property tax amount that would normally um, occur. Uh, for, for instance, you know, um, if the house is 75,000 home value from tax assessment, it could, you know, so that it, it, it's actually, uh, what I say, uh, different, how I, I put it together, like it's a different, like tax assessments are different in uh, in different states. 
okay um, if it's one state is 75,000 other state it would be worth 125,000 or it would be in another uh, tax assessment in other state would be 200,000 okay so that's what I'm try trying to explain that to you guys that every state you know it's different uh, property tax assessment is it varies from state to state uh, another point I want to bring in uh, since we are talking about tax is a federal tax deduction when when you are looking to purchase a home it's important to understand what can be deducted on your tax return and what can't because property taxes and interest paid on your mortgage can be deducted so if you itemized your federal income taxes which can reduce your um, you know uh, how, how do I say you know because property taxes and interest paid on the mortgage can be deducted okay like if you itemize your federal income tax which can reduce your income tax burden okay because many homeowners you know buyers unfortunately they overlook the effect of mortgage interest on their federal income tax payment right because mortgage interest can be powerful financial planning too right okay so calculate the amount of mortgage interest deduction you are eligible for and include that in your annual financial planning then make a point of checking you know with your IRS um, IRS form um, it's a 1098 form okay which is uh, what is IRS some of you might don't know uh, IRS is guys internal revenue service and they have a form 1098 which you will um, receive from your lender at the end of the year every year this form shows the amount of mortgage interest that you paid the tax card and the jobs act you know uh, applies uh, from 2018 to 2025 um, and limits the the aggregate deduction uh, for that state and local real estate okay just the property taxes state and local personal property taxes state and local and and foreign income or war profit or you know access profit taxes or general sale taxes you know um, for any tax year up to 10,000 right but if you are filing the taxes separately right it's 5,000 if you if you're married but filing separately it's 5,000 so this limit does not apply if those taxes are paid you know or or occurred in carrying on trade or business or in any activity engaged in for production of income or an activity engaged in for production of uh, you know other words uh, uh, like if you are just living in your home you can only claim up to 10,000 in tax deduction on your property but if you are earning income directly from your home in some way the limit might be it could be waived okay another point I want to make guys is that current mortgage rates right because now as we know in 2021 the current mortgage rates are relatively low right because interest rates vary through the years correct several years ago interest rates were higher right it was more expensive to obtain a mortgage since the cost have been reduced it's now easier and less expensive to own a house uh, because of the lower mortgage rates of course your payment will be lower too so 
you have to decide you know that if the ownership rights it is creating a freedom to you uh, you're decorating your home improvement choices you know uh, if you don't break building codes or violation homeowner association rules you know how the paint you want to paint on the walls right the fixture you want to add the updates you want to do on your home and finishes you want to do or build a patio or the decks so changing your environment to suit you know whims in in freeing aspect of the home ownership so a sense of belonging to the community home ownership tend to stay in home for longer than the renter and are more likely to grow the roots okay they might join a neighborhood association or volunteer a nearby community center you know join school group or align with the business improvement in your district area so renters might not do any of those things because they are not allowed to they are renting it's particularly particularly if they know their lease is up in a year and they want to move out they don't want to <laughs> do the the all the improvements in on the house with their own money correct so there is an intangible pleasant feeling attached to owning your own house a sense of freedom and independence the home you live in it belongs to you you can do whatever you want to do with it whatever changes you want to make in your house however you want to live you are don't you you are not daunted about you know increasing in rent or losing the lease or if the you know your owner uh, landlord they decided to sell the property or something happens right and now you have to start all over to find another place so you are free to make improvement any and changes also owning your home it gives your you know children the guarantee of attending the schools in the area on a more permanent basis you you never need to worry about notice of you know landlords or you know always showing up or vacating the property you know that you rented a house or apartment for a variety of reason over which you have no control okay so these are the you have to think about you know what are the advantages of owning a house you know Um, let's also talk about since we've been talking about you know advantages of owning a house and um, the the point we was making today owning or versus renting um let's also talk about you know advantages of renting okay um because it seems a shorter list but one man's pro is another man's con right and there's a certainly our advantage to uh renting to factor into your um buy or rent decision okay it varies person to person no responsibility of course for maintenance so admittedly you know it's a it's a big question as a, as a renter you are not responsible for home maintenance or home repair costs right so if toilet backs up or a pipe burst down pipe burst down right and apply appliance stop working or you don't have to call expensive repair person you just call your landlord and or your superintendent you know renters in the condos or townhouse or apartments don't they don't have a lawns they don't have a grounds or care you know obligations to care for the lawns right so another point is uh, advantage of renting is relocation 
that's also easier when when renting or relocating for work it's easier though uh, a sudden move may require you to break your lease you can partially offset the cost by subletting your apartment or taking with your landlord right so on the other hand selling a home it take time and effort correct when you're ready to sell the house if you have a short timeline to sell your home you may be forced to accept a lower price and lose some of your investment correct so no real estate market uh, exposure you know home value because they fluctuate right we do that and it can decline over time so if you are a renter that's not your problem if you are an owner trying to sell that is your problem correct so these are some of the advantages of renting too you know uh, as we covered you know uh, advantages of owning a house versus advantages of uh, renting a house right so another point i want to okay since we've been talking about advantages and disadvantages of renting versus owning let's let's cover i want to bring out some of the points for you guys what are the like disadvantages you know of owning a house correct cuz the renters the disadvantage i would say is is like maintenance right cuz renters largest advantage might just be the homeowners major disadvantage because while insurance might be available to protect against expense from uh, major catas you know maintenance items or homeowners at homeowners time right so maintenance and repair can be simple as repainting the you know baseboard or or extensive or expensive as replacing the hvac system or sewer pipe right so the expense will vary from year to year um however you can expect to pay home 1% of the value of your home annually toward you know the expenses if you if you live in 200000 home for a uh, dollar home for 10 years that's like 20000 over the period and perhaps more if you must replace a costly long lived you know mechanical uh, items such as furnace or hvac so keep in mind the usual homeowners chores of lawn care snow removal gutter cleaning and other regular home maintenance needs that that need to maintain the house correct um another disadvantage i would say you know upfront closing cost okay buying a home it entails uh, numerous upfront cost some are paid out of pocket after seller accept your purchase offer while others are paid at closing cost okay so these include earning money down payment typical typically ranging from like 3.5% for fha right like federal housing administration or loan to more than 20% of the purchase price okay um home appraisal home inspection property taxes first years homeowners insurance you know these are all cost guys upfront cost correct so you have to know these these upfront cost okay um because these it includes first of all earnest money deposit right when you uh putting the offer that's called emd okay that is you have to put a deposit that 
with your contract right that you will be buying this house and so that you know seller can take the house off the market correct so while others are uh, cost are also paid at closing time okay like uh, earnest money deposit down payment you know um it could be ranged from three and a half percent for uh, FHA, and what is FHA? FHA is, guys, it's a Federal Housing Administration. Okay, loan to more than twenty percent of the purchase price. Okay, so the FHA, you don't have to come up with the twenty percent. It's you can start with three and a half percent just to get into the home ownership. Okay. So, otherwise, typically, lenders, they always want 20% down and they will give you 80% of the loan. You have to come up with the 20% of the purchase price of the loan, okay? And then home appraisal, home inspection, property tax, homeowner insurance, all these are upfront costs. You have to be ready for it. Another uh, point I want to make is loss of it's a relocation uh, flexibility because it's much easier to break a lease and move out out of town than to, you know, uh, arrange for the sale of the residence. Right. You can just let the your landlord know that you are planning to if it's a yearly lease you have with your landlord and then in six months you have to move out of the city or state due to your job or or any other life change right you can always let uh, talk to your landlord and you can let them know that you won't be keeping a yearly lease and you would like to uh, break it out from yearly to six months or whatever that you have to decide with your home uh, landlord okay um, but selling a home from out of town it involves special logistics and financial matter um, also you have to deal with the mortgage while the home is on the market correct Another point I want to make, guys, is is financial loss potential. Okay, homeownership it build equity over time. Uh, however, equity doesn't equate to profit. Like if home values in your area go down or remain uh, stagnant during your time. As a homeowner, the appraisal, appraised value of your home could decrease, putting you at risk of financial loss when you sell. Okay. The disadvantage of renting, um, so the, this is uh, of owning the house, right? That, those are the disadvantage. But let's cover also the disadvantage of, you know, renting is that there's no equity building, number one. Because the monthly rent you pay, it goes to the landlord and they are paying off their mortgage, correct? It represents the fee you pay for using the property. You gain no ownership in the property, no matter how long you live there, correct? There's no tax benefits while homeowners, they can deduct property taxes and mortgage interest on their tax return, renters, they are not eligible for, for housing related um, any federal taxes, okay, or any tax credit or any deduction, okay. The home improvement also, any improvement you do in the house, it goes towards your landlord towards that house any structure any decorative home improvement that renters make that belong to building owners and it will have to stay behind when you move to a different place additionally approval for desired you know uh, major redecoration 
if it's necessary, you have to be get the approval from your landlord. So after all is said and done, the decision to buy or rent, it depends on your, as a home buyer, your circumstances. There's no denying though that a home of your own is a good financial and a great emotional investment. An investment in a home, it can also mean an investment in your future, correct? So there is much more to consider when you want to buy a home or switching from renting to home ownership. Okay, that's the highly challenging uh, point. You have to come up with you or your partner, right? What you guys have to decide that. So, but it's definitely, it's exciting and it's an amazing decision, guys, because Again, there's the pros and cons of owning versus renting, right? But the joy and, and uh, exciting excitement, building the house together, you know, it's an amazing decision to, to make for, you know, you, your partner, and your children, your family. So, hope all this helped, guys. I think uh, I covered a lot today about you know owning versus renting and how you can make decision uh, what are the advantage and uh, disadvantage you know of owning or renting what is the best uh, choice you know you have to decide which way is the best choice for for yourself right um, and what if the advantage of renting or uh, advantage of owning or disadvantage of renting or disadvantage of owning. So, hope you can make a better choice. Um, hope this helped and uh, till then, I talk to you guys later and again, from bottom of my heart, I thank you, thank you so much, you know, for all the wonderful comments you guys write for me. I really, really appreciate you guys and all that, you know, that how you guys are also, these videos are helping you guys. Uh, it's helping your families also, you are, you know, how you are sharing these videos with your loved ones, right? Uh, who want to learn about real estate or owning a house or if how to sell a house or they are uh, looking into real estate investment, I mean, it really makes my day when I read those comments and your, all your likes, your, you know, thank you for subscribing and liking and <laughs> writing wonderful comments. All right, guys, till then, take care of yourself. And this is Ruby Singh, Real Estate News School, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Take care.